dimensions and shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of the potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto each other. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory due to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone at Ruel. Peace and salutations and many blessings to you, elect Akim, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, and I'm going to be doing a lesson in regards to protection. Okay, um, and it's going to be a Hebrew prayer. That I'm going to put on here um, through the spirit that I, I had put together. All right, for us to call on to the Lord to protect us when we go out on our highways and byways, and namely for us to have our loins girt. All right, and that's what the prayer is going to be based on, having our loins girt. All right, because um, the time that we're getting ready to approach is um, what the scriptures talked about, what the scriptures prescribed first and foremost. And we're coming more and more into the time where we're actually seeing it more and more. OK, you have this government shutdown that's been going on for about 35, 36 days now. All right. And um, Donald Trump is getting ready to um, getting ready to put out a state of emergency. OK. And as we're on the highways and byways prophesying, we see the things that are taking place. All right. The Israel, the, the Hebrew Israelites, what they call black Hebrew Israelites. All right. We understand that we are the biblical Hebrew Israelites. All right. Um, we're being put now in more of a. Um, we're being um, how I should how should I say this? We're pretty much being put out there on a on an international scale, where everybody is seeing who we are. Okay, all right. You got CNN, you got CBS, you got Fox. All right, based on that situation that had happened in D.C. with HOI, which the way they did it, you know, it it it, 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 it wasn't prudent at all. It wasn't wise. But at the end of the day, this is the program of the Heavenly Father. OK, and even Apostle Gabar had done a lesson going into it. You got certain guys that that um, that pretty much testify of Yahweh Shai with envy and strife. And you got guys that do it with insincerity. All right. What you seen within HOI, how they preached it, it was through envy and strife. Now, the good thing is Israel's put out there and Israelites are understanding more so who Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is. OK, but when that time comes, a lot of these guys aren't going to be protected because they weren't doing it with all sincerity and in truth. OK, you got guys that are out here doing it for vainglory. And when that time comes, man, the scriptures talk about a time that's going to come that's far worse than any time that we've ever seen. All right. And, and we understand that we're living in a time of acts right now. And when you even go into the time of acts, just going into what was taking place, a lot of our forefathers were persecuted for righteousness sake. OK, and as we understand, we're in the time of X, we're we're closing in on that time where people are going to come and they're going to um, they're going to come to us with malicious intentions. OK, and we want to make sure that we pray that we're covered within that day. All right. The time that's coming is far worse than any time that has ever been placed on the earth, alluding to Daniel chapter 12, verse one. All right. Now, the first scripture that I'm going to start on is going to be in Revelation, the third chapter. Starting at the 10th verse and it says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And the time that's approaching is the hour of temptation. All right. It's going to come a time when a lot of guys aren't going to be able to eat. You ain't going to be able to drink no water. All right. Our enemy is getting ready to come against us like a flood. And the elder Arianaza did a lesson going into this. The elder of our camp, Arianaza, he did a lesson going into this into this yesterday, I believe. All right. Where our enemy is going to come at us like a flood. All right. They're going to 
try to come with weapons. And a lot of these people are going to be Jake's as well. All right. There's videos and Lord willing, uh, if I can remember, I'll post these videos here in the in the description box. But you got even our own people that are coming against us, clowning on us that the fact that we believe we're Hebrew Israelites and, and the scriptures talk about it. All right. And they're laughing at us, scorning us, speaking all manner of evil things towards us. All right. And these aren't it ain't only a few Jakes that are out there like that. All right. When these Edomites, when our enemies see us out here on the highways and byways preaching, they're looking at us and they're saying that we're terrorists. And when they put the word black in front of our names, that word black is synonymous for them pretty much saying terrorists. OK, so as Esau points the finger at us, they're going to say we're the problem and they're going to say we need to be reprimanded in some type of way. All right. And you got our own people that's going to come up against us and join hand in hand with the enemy. All right. They did it in the time of the Maccabees. They did it in the time of 70 A.D. All right. And there is one key figure I can remember in 70 A.D. who went by the name of, I, I believe it was um, Tiberius Julius Alexander. All right. Who would help aid um, Titus and um, I believe it was um, Titus and Vespasian to come into our city and take us down. All right. And it's going to be a lot more Jakes that are like that. All right. You even had guys during the Maccabean revolt who had came up against us, man. Uh, you got you got Jason and it was also other guys that was back then, man. So people are going to come up against us very soon. And the scriptures talk about a great flood coming to us. All right. Now, we need to make sure that we're protected and we're doing the things within the within the spirit to be protected. All right. We want to make sure that we're in the spirit. Because if we're in the spirit, we're going to be protected in that day. All right. So next scripture I'm going to go into is going to be in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter six. And I'm going to just read one verse. It's so much to go into it, but I'm going to just read one verse and that's going to be in six and ten. So Ephesians six and ten says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Okay. Okay. And I even Joshua made this statement loosely paraphrased and he said, be be strong and of good courage. All right. Because we understand the time that's at hand, the hour of temptation that's at hand can't be weak in the spirit. OK, this ain't a time when we're supposed to be getting weak in the spirit. All right. We need to be continually abounding day in and day out in the spirit. OK, because if we ain't going to get weeded out. So we need to make sure that we pray for more strength as the days progress. That we will be able to endure that day that's coming. That we will be able to overcome in that day. All right. Because back then in Revelation 3, it says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. And how do you keep the word of his patience? Constant prayer, constant fasting, constant reading in the scriptures, constantly being a brother. And the Lord will continue to equip you with this spiritual armor that's written of in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And if we keep the word of his patience, as he states, he's going to keep us from the hour of temptation. And that's going to be meant to try the whole world. OK, so it's important that we're strong in the Lord. All right. That way we're going to be over. We're, we're going to be able to overcome the hour of temptation. All right. My next scripture I'm going to bring out is going to be in the book of uh, Second Kings. Chapter nine, verse one. All right. So it says, and Elisha, the prophet, called one of the children of the prophets. All right. And for those who don't understand who the children of the prophets are, that's you. OK, the children of the prophets were pretty much a school of prophets back then. All right. And Elisha was one of the elders of the of the school. OK. And that children of the, that school, the school of the prophets is here to this day. All right. Yahweh Shai reestablished it. Matter of fact, Yahweh Shai reestablished it. But John came. And what did John do back then? What did John do? He, he, he turned the hearts back. Matter of fact, I'm going to read this in Malachi. And then I'm going to go right back to this in Kings. But in Malachi 4 and 5, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Check this out. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers Least I come and smite the earth with the curse. OK, so who was who was Elijah? Elijah was um, I'm, I'm sorry. Elisha was Elijah's uh, successor. All right. And Elijah back then was the head of the school of the prophets. OK, the guys that were under him that were learning were called the children of the prophets. And Elisha was one of them at a point of time. 
All right. And it was a school of the prophets. OK. And you had in the time of Acts, the reestablishment or really the time of Yahawashai, the reestablishment of the school of the prophets. And who introduced that? It was John the Baptist, who through the spirit is Elijah. And then fast forward on over to today, because the great and dreadful day didn't happen back then around the time of Yahawashai. OK, Yahawashai prophesied about that day that was to come. And as we read in Revelation, the third chapter, it went into the hour of temptation that was going to come and it was going to try all flesh. So we're approaching that time of the great and dreadful day. OK, so as it's written in Malachi four and five, it says, I will send you Elijah, the prophet to come uh, before the coming of the great and dreadful day. We believe that to be Elder Abba Bivens, who had came earlier. And what did Elder Abba Bivens do? He helped establish the school of the prophets. All right. He had brought back through the spirit, through the spirit of the Lord, I should say. He used Elder Abba Bivens to bring back the children to the fathers. All right. The children of the prophets are back here today and they're going to be doing the same exact thing as they did in the time of Acts. Also, as they did in the time of um, Elisha that we read. And just for one more scripture to prove that. And then I'll jump back to Kings. This is the book of Acts chapter three. And I'm going to read verse 25 verse. Uh, let's see. Verse 24. It says, "Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after as many have spoken, have likewise foretold these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which the most high made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham and in thy seed shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed. And when you go into that word kindreds, that word there in the Greek is pronounced patrias. Salash. Strong G 4396. Prophetes. Prophets. Prophetes. But I meant to go to kindreds. Strong's G thirty nine sixty five. Patria. Patria. And when you go into that word kindreds, it literally means lineage running back to some progenitor or ancestry. It says a nation or a tribe. And it also says the Israelites, which distributed into 12 tribes, descending from the 12 sons of Jacob. These were divided into families, which were divided into houses. OK, so as we go back to that in Acts, Peter was pretty much establishing, letting us know that we are the children of the prophets. All right. As what was prophesied in Malachi, the fourth chapter, it's saying, I will send you Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers. OK, so we're being brought back to the understanding that's been taught to us for eons. OK, and this is before the great and the dreadful day. All right. So jumping back to the initial preset that I had, verse nine and one, second Kings, verse nine and one. It says, and Elisha, the prophet called one of the children of the prophets, all right, and said unto him, gird up thy loins and take this box of oil in thine hand and go to Roth Ramoth Gilead. OK, so he was telling one of the fellow prophets, one of the fellow students of Elisha to go and take some oil because that oil was supposed to be taken to anoint Jehu. OK, now, when you look at it spiritually, what does oil represent? It represents this word. It represents this understanding of this word. That's why in first John two and twenty one, it says, I have given you an unction from the Holy One to know all things. All right. And that unction means anointing. OK, so the the, the oil ultimately represents the, the knowledge. OK, so verse two says, and when thou comest thither, look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in. And make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him into the inner chamber. All right. Now, why did Jehoshaphat had to get brought into the inner chamber? All right. Let's continue to read. And I'll go into that. Verse three says, then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. OK, now, when you go into this, Jehu wasn't king yet. All right. Now, a common custom. All right. Before a king got into rulership, he had to be anointed by the prophet. Now, going into this, when the king was anointed by the prophet, via example, when Saul was anointed, when David was anointed, when Solomon was anointed, when those kings were anointed, it was made a big deal. And everybody was aware of this fact that these kings were going to be anointed. OK, but what did 
What did the servant of Elisha do? He brought Jehu into the inner chamber to anoint him. All right. When you go into that inner chamber, it was pretty much a secret place where nobody else was around. Because you think about it as Jehu wasn't the king at this time. All right. The king at that time, I believe it was Joram, who was one of the children of Ahab. All right. And if it would have been found out that there was going to be another king over Israel that was going to be anointed, it would have been counted for as treason. OK. And what was the penalty for treason? Death. OK. So that's why Elisha told his servant to gird up his loins. OK. Because he was going to anoint Jehu to be king and it wasn't allowed. That's why it was done in secrecy. And that's why he told Jehu to flee and, and don't wait. OK. So when you look at that spiritually right now in this day that we're in, as we have this understanding and as we have this oil and as we go on the highways and byways and we preach. OK, we're not doing this in secret. We're doing this on the forefront for everybody to see. And since everybody's bearing witness to it, our enemy is going to come up against us like a flood. But what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to gird our loins as men. All right. When one girds his loins, he's literally getting ready for hard labor. Or he's getting ready for war. And we're in the process of doing both. The laboring meaning pushing his word. And the war is coming. Now does that mean you get a strap and get a gun M16. And have it as your weapon or your defense? Hell no man. Alright because you got a lot of guys. Namely these guys that call themselves the pull up boys. That feel like their, their weaponry has to be in physical arms. Alright a true man of the Lord's weaponry. Is going to be the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah within this day. And that's going to protect us if you believe. All right. If you believe in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, especially in this day, you won't have to resort to getting physical arms and getting guns and getting your sword. All right. The angels are around us protecting us. As is written in Psalms 34, the angel of the Lord encampeth right about them that fear him. OK, so we ain't supposed to be on the highways and byways in fear. And we're approaching a time where we're all going to be tried. All right. But Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is going to count us worthy if we endure. OK. So I got another precept I'm going to go to, and it's going to be in the book of Jer Jeremiah, chapter one. All right. The scriptures say fight for the Lord unto death. OK, unto death, man. That doesn't mean you, you get your strap and you and you pull a Tony Montana and go all the way till you die, man. That, that means, no, you, you're a sheep counted for the slaughter. You're going to continue to preach this word and believe that you're protected by the Lord. OK, but you also have your loins girt. All right. Meaning have your mind prepared. This is Jeremiah chapter one, verse 17. <laughs> Salakia. And it reads, therefore, gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee, be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. So that means as we're on the highways and byways preaching, you preaching in full confidence and full boldness, believing that the spirit of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah is dealing with you, man. And the first thing he said was have your loins girt. That means be prepared. Have your mind right. OK. And when you read this, he didn't tell Jeremiah to pick up any weapon of arms. He told him to go out there and preach. All right. This is why we don't need no weapons or no arms. But the word is our weapon. Verse 18 says, for behold, I will make thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar, meaning you're going to be completely unmovable if you fully believe that the word is dealing with you. And if you fully believe that you're protected by the angels, if you go out there with your loins girt, it says in brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah. Against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith Yahweh, to deliver thee. Now, does that only apply for back then? Or do we read these scriptures and we apply it for our learning and understanding as is written? The scriptures say in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, I'm sorry, Romans 15 and four, it says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. OK, so you go to Jeremiah back to what was left off. 
And it says, and they shall fight against thee. And we ain't supposed to. The thing is, we're not supposed to fear the fact that they come against us. All right. We're supposed to go out on the highways and byways and make ourselves as men and have our loins girt. When you read it in Ezekiel, he said to make thy forehead hard against their foreheads. OK. And it's funny because you read it previously. It says the kings of Judah and the princes and all the priests and against the people of the land are going to come against us. That's going to happen this day. All of Israel is going to come up against us. Well, the majority of Israel is going to come up against us and they're going to want us dead because they believe that um, we're going to have a key part in why they ain't going to be able to eat, why they ain't going to be able to drink, why martial law is going to come. All right. Remember the time of Moses when Moses had went to Pharaoh. All right. And what did Pharaoh do as Moses was going to Pharaoh? Pharaoh was cutting off. Um, he was pretty much cutting off our, our rations and Israel came up against Moses back then. All right. The same thing's going to happen today. The only difference is it ain't going to just be Israel that's going to come up against us, but it's going to also be kings and princes and officers and priests and all these other people of these other nations. All right. That's why the scriptures say, matter of fact, the spirit's telling me to get this in Daniel. I believe it's in Daniel 9 and 25. Let's see here. Or is it 9 to 26? Yeah, I think it's 9 to 26. Yeah, this is Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. And it says, And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the, I'm sorry, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So our enemy is going to come up against us as a flood. But if we believe Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is with us and we're out there as men, we're going to be covered in that day. And we're going to be protected, man. As the scriptures say, the Lord hath rewarded me according to my righteousness. OK, so within that being the case, if you out there doing what you're supposed to be doing, making yourself a living sacrifice, he's going to protect you in that day as our enemy comes up against the, uh, like, like a flood. All right. He's going to keep us from the hour of temptation that's meant to try the whole earth. OK. And I know I said I was going to leave off on Daniel nine, but I got another my last scripture I'm going to leave off on. And it's in the book of Second Kings, chapter 22, verse 17. And it says, and this is a Psalm of David. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but Yahweh was my stay. And this applies still to this day. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the waves of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my power. So if we have our loins girt. And we have Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai in our minds and meditate on his word day and night and believe those angels are out there with us. He's going to keep us protected in this day. All right. The days you go out on the highways and byways and preach. And as it progresses, when these people come up against us and really want us dead and try to hit fatal blows against us, your heavenly father is going to be our stay. All right. And hey, believe that a miracle can happen right at that moment, man. Just like it happened back then. And there's so many more examples that can get brought out. So many more examples. But let's believe and have faith that the Lord is with us. All right. But within that, have your loins girt. All right. Be a man. OK. So this leaves me with this prayer in the Hebrew that I'm going to recite that the spirit had me put together. OK. And it's Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakwadash. I ask you, keep our loins girt in the days of our prophecy or burden and preserve us from our mortal enemies. Bahashem Yahawashai, Bahashem Recha Kodash. Now, how you say that in the Hebrew, Yahweh Bahashem Yahawashai, Bahashem Recha Kodash, Sha'aliaka, Shamarnoa, Mathanyam Azar, Baha Yawam, Mashanoa, Wa Natazarnoa, Ayabnawa, Banapash, Bahashem Yahawashai, Bahashem Racha Kodash. All right. So Yahweh Bahashem Yahawashai, Bahashem Racha Kodash, 
Sha'aliaka is I ask you. Shamarnawa is to keep our Mathanium loins azar girt Baha Yawam in the days. Mashanawa is of our prophecy or burden. All right. Wa Natazarnawa in preserve us. Ayabna, I'm, I'm sorry, Ayabnawa Banapash from our mortal enemies. Bahashem Yahawashai in the name of Yahawashai in the Holy Spirit. Bahashem Rakakodash, the water to Wab. Okay, so before brothers go out on the highways and byways, and whatever hell breaks loose, whenever it breaks loose, that's a prayer. And there's many prayers to make, and there's many prayers to do. I know Elder Managan does a ton of prayers through the spirit, okay? But the spirit uh, moved me to go into a prayer of having our loins girt, asking for the Lord to have our loins girt, all right, when that day comes, and also when we're on the highways and byways, okay? So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutations and many blessings to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth. Kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.